Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a certain type of fig, a certain class of fig called the Adriatic types. And the online fig growing community, the people who are obsessed with figs and have many, many varieties and have sorted through many varieties, this is what we kind of call them because the Adriatic types look a lot like a fig called Adriatic, which is very popular. Uh, all throughout the United States and it goes by many names. It has many synonyms p potentially But usually you can classify these type of figs by their green skin Sometimes they'll turn yellow and more heat in a, a drier warmer climate and also depending on the variety, but there's always a dark red pulp green skin dark red pulp with a similar shape here very reminiscent of green aishia, which is a very common fig that I'm sure a lot of you guys have in some form, or verte, uh, J.H. Adriatic, strawberry verte, strawberry, Bataglia green. There's so many of them here um, in the United States of many different names, many different forms, and it's just easier to associate all of them with one name. So what we have here is two different figs here, and, and this is kind of a bonus because we're going to taste your standard classic Adriatic, which is right here. It's called Sister Madeline's Green Greek. This is from a church up in Michigan that Charlie Little found. And then we also have over here one of my favorite figs. Uh, it really was a rock star last year, and we're going to see if it still has enough differentiation between your standard Adriatic fig. And you would look at this and say, well, it looks quite similar to the fig we just looked at, to the one right next to it. Maybe the pulp's a little bit different. The one on the right is maybe a little bit less ripe. But I would have said, to an, with an untrained eye, I would have said these are the same fig or very closely related. And uh, my experience with the Blanche de Du Saison is what this is here on the left, is that this is not similar um, almost at all. It's, a very, it's quite different and um, I want to talk about those differences and really highlight this particular fig in the video. Blanche to do Cezanne, I want to show you guys my tree. I have actually a couple trees. Excuse the brightness here guys. Sun's strong over here. But uh, I have a couple trees that I've been trying to propagate and I had one in a 10 gallon size pot that we actually put it here in the ground um, this spring, and it didn't really grow all that well, but somehow it did manage to put out a bunch of fruits in a pretty reasonable amount of time. Today is uh, uh, after the September 15th mark, but it's really not that far afterwards. So this is a pretty reasonable time for a fig such as this, uh, an Adriatic type. Usually the, the Adriatic types will start ripening around September 15th, where I, has other, I have other figs that could potentially ripen as early as April, uh, August 15th, I'm sorry, in the form of my pastelier you see in here, or some of my other early figs. So it's not typically the earliest fig, these Adriatic types, but you can see I've got some air layers on it, uh, or one air layer on it. I have another tree, I think, on the other side of the house because I'm really valuing this variety um, for its taste qualities. Well, let's taste it right now. Let's sit you guys down and talk about potentially the differences and a lot of it is in the pulp it's not necessarily in the flavor of the fig but maybe there is let's see let's see if my memory uh, from last year is serving me correctly here all right so we have our two figs side by side obviously one is more ripe and one is is uh, is less ripe which could be an unfair advantage but I want to taste for you guys first the Sister Madeleines. Very jammy, you can tell. It looks very jammy, quite thick. It's got a dark red pulp, meaning it's got a pretty strong berry flavor to it. Let's try it. Very good. Very close to strawberry flavor. Very, very close to actual strawberry. And I give a lot of figs credit and say they taste like strawberries because that's the closest thing I can associate that berry flavor with. 
but a lot of these Adriatic types taste almost exact to a strawberry. And of course, it's wrapped up in a melon. It's kind of like a melon plus a strawberry. And they're easily highly regarded as some of the best figs that we can grow. And they're also very widely available. If you look for green Aishia in the store or online at some nurseries, you're always going to find green Aishia or Verte, Aishia green, same thing. But now let me try the Blanche de Dieu Cezanne. And this is a fig that actually was given to me by the late Michael Grace. And Michael Grace was a, a big time collector um, down in Virginia. And he sold, I think he was telling me he sold maybe a thousand or over a thousand trees in his day. Um, he recently passed. And he had um, a lot of sales that he would do to restaurants, local restaurants. He would, he would grow figs mostly to sell them um, sell the, the fruit actually to local restaurants and he also would sell the plants um, he was a great grower um, and he had pretty much many different varieties and a, a vast amount of knowledge on what restaurants really liked and it's a shame he did leave some information on what restaurants really liked back on figs for fun and even our figs uh, but it would be nice to be able to pick his brain today or even next year when I start selling my own figs but this is one that he he really liked this was his favorite fig i believe other than the cold adams this is his his top choice here and he didn't want unfortunately he didn't want this fig in many people's hands um it was almost a bit greedy it seemed like to me um not that he was greedy but that's the the opinion uh the feeling i was getting from him was that he kind of wanted this one off for himself, and if he did give it to somebody, he didn't want that person to um, give it a lot of attention. So here I am talking about it on my YouTube channel, which inevitably it's going to get a lot of attention um, because of this video. But uh, in my opinion, some of these figs deserve the attention. They deserve the credit. Uh, if there's something good that somebody really likes, wouldn't you want to share it with them? I think he was just worried that this fig was going to turn into the next big thing, like Ponte Tresa went for close to $1,000 and Fico Love went for $1,000. I don't think that's going to happen with this. There's, there's too many people at this point that have this. Um, you know, I don't think his fear of this happening is really valid at this point anymore, but uh, let's try it right now and even see if the if my thoughts are the same as last year. Yeah, absolutely. So this is pretty much it's pretty much a cold dom. Like it really is, uh, which is crazy. It's not cold dom blanc. You can see it's it's. Uh, you know, it's it's green on the outside, right? So it could be called an en blanc. It's got a similar shape. It's got that longer neck, but it's not. It's definitely not. And it's got a great sugariness to it. An interesting sugar flavor. Some nice figginess, even a little bit of, a tad bit of bitter in there from the skin. And the pulp is extremely thick. just like the cold anoms. And I said last year, this is the closest fig I have to eating pure jam. And uh, I don't think that's exactly accurate this year. Cause I had a Malta Black that was like eating pure raspberry jam. But this one's out of this world. This is a really, really tasty fig guys. And it's so different the point of this is that it's so different than this. It honestly puts this to shame. In fact, it doesn't have that strawberry berry flavor. It has a different berry flavor. And it's uh, maybe a bit more mild in terms of intensity. But overall, that's a really, really tasty fig. Interesting sugariness, sugariness to it. It's very cold and esque it really is. Um, maybe not 
as exactly as thick, but it's still really good. And to taste this one once again, very different fig. So it kind of just goes to show you guys that my point here is that, yeah, these figs may look similar in appearance, but it, until you really get to taste them side by side or even just taste them um, on your own, on their own, you get to realize that there is um, something going on here, really just evolution, and that these figs, maybe they all started out as the same fig. Maybe they all were the same fig at one point. Um, or nature has just been creating very similar figs throughout the, the selection process. But the point is, is that these, all these figs have adapted in their location and they changed. And maybe they look similar to an untrained eye, but they're not. And that's why I really value finding all these different figs of the same type. Finding different Adriatic types and putting them all together and seeing which one's the best. Or finding six or seven Villa de Bordeaux that maybe might be sl very slightly different from each other. Just to find the one that is the Blanche de Du Cezanne. Same thing with the Hardy Chicago types in that I just believe at this point my Azores Dark is superior to the others at least so far. Or let's see, what are some other ones that I'm trying? Uh, you know, my other figs like uh, White Triana and Dr. Gawadi and Canadria, finding the one that's very similar of the, uh, the best one of those types. You know, so I think there's some value in this and finding which one of these, because this, this is honestly, you can't even really put it in the same class as the, as the Adriatics. It's that, it's that different and it may look like it's so similar, but it really is that different. So, um, yeah. This is the video here, guys, on Blanche de Saison, the Adriatic types. The other fig here was Sister Madeline's Green Greek. Um, very closely related to Green Aishia. Both very good figs, but I have to give an edge to Blanche de Saison. That's one that I'm going to be making more copies of and putting more of them in the ground. Um, it seems to be a wonderful fig here, guys. So I'll catch you all soon. All right. And uh, take care. We'll see you for tomorrow's video.